Despite flames and fury on the streets of France, President Macron officially signs his controversial pension reform into law. Three people have died and dozens more are injured amid clashes in Sudan between the National Army and paramilitaries. There were flames and fury on the streets of France on Friday night, but it wasn't enough to stop President Macron from signing his controversial pension reform into law on Saturday. It comes just hours after the reform, which raises the retirement age from 62 to 64, was officially endorsed by the country's Constitutional Council. Following the ruling, protests erupted across the country. In Paris, over 100 people were arrested. The unions have called for a major nationwide strike on the 1st of May. L'intersyndicale appelle à un 1er mai historique. C'est la première fois que l'ensemble des organisations syndicales appellent les salariés à manifester le 1er mai. Ça sera donc un raz-de-marée populaire, massif, inédit, exceptionnel. Macron says the bill is necessary to stop the pension system from collapsing. The reforms are expected to come into effect by early September. Russian shelling of a residential building in the eastern Ukrainian city of Slovyansk has killed at least 11 people, including a toddler, and injured several others. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky offered his condolences to the families of the victims and condemned who he called Moscow's ceaseless campaign of, quote, murder and terror. Черговий удар терористів, ракети С-300 по житлових кварталах, по звичайній цивільній забудові. Під завалами є люди. Робиться все, щоб їх врятувати, робиться все, щоб врятувати поранених. Є перші дані про загиблих, мої співчуття тим, хто втратив на рідних. With Russian mercenaries advancing westward from the city of Bakhmut, Ukrainian troops are gearing up for a highly anticipated and large-scale counteroffensive. The sound of gunfire in the Sudanese capital. Three people have died and dozens more injured after fierce clashes erupted on Saturday across the country between the National Army and paramilitaries. The fighting comes after months of escalated tensions between the generals and years of political unrest after October 2021's military coup. It has brought the signing of an internationally backed deal to revive the nation's democratic tradition to a standstill. Both sides have blamed the other for initiating the violence. US President Joe Biden has confirmed he will run for re-election in 2024 in a statement to the press as he prepared to board Air Force One to return to the US from Ireland. The announcement followed a passionate address to tens of thousands of people outside a cathedral in his ancestral hometown in County Mayo. Everything between Ireland and America runs deep. Our history, our heritage, our sorrows, our future, our friendship, our joys. But more than anything, hope is what beats in the hearts of all our people. It was a homecoming trip for the US president whose great-great-great-grandfather, Edward Blewett, left Ballina for Scranton, Pennsylvania in the 1850s. Going forward, the 80-year-old Democrat faces the prospect of again challenging former President Donald Trump in the race for the White House in what would be a rerun of the 2020 election. Greek Orthodox worshippers have been gathering in Jerusalem's Holy Sepulchre Church to celebrate the ceremony of the Holy Fire in which a flame kindled from the heart of Jesus' tomb is shared among worshippers before being transferred by relay to Russia, Greece and beyond. Romanians have been on the roads to take advantage of their Easter weekend. Many travel into the mountains to enjoy skiing and tobogganing, while others prefer seaside resorts with thermal waters. In North Macedonia, believers left Easter eggs at the St. Clement Oritsky Cathedral. Traditionally, they are accompanied by prayers for good health for the year to come. Church bells also fell silent as a sign of mourning for Jesus' crucifixion.